today we're going to talk about the Mexican robot. Let's see if we can get the camera set up to show the little guy. Right there. Originally I made reproductions of this rare toy robot in, in metal, in tin. And then, I don't know, three or so years ago I uh, started making 3D printed versions of it. I'm talking about this guy here. And I'm going to put the files up on Thingiverse so you all can uh, build the robot if you'd like as well. It's a shuffle foot, ratchets in the wheel type foot action with uh, swinging arms and a lit face. There's um, gonna be, this battery pack comes off. Then you can get right to the, uh, the two double A's. Hopefully some of this is on screen. I can't really see the camera from this position. And basically what I'm going to do is uh, show you a bit of a slideshow of all the parts and, and how to assemble it rather than actually building one live like I've done on all these other 3D printed robots that I've put up for you guys to build because um, I really don't need another one. If I build another one from scratch, I end up with another one. So, long story short, there's a switch on top of the head. When you turn it on, you have the, uh, get it closer. You have your moving legs and your lit face and the arms. And when things work right, glass, this glass case isn't the best surface for it, but... You get the idea. Here, maybe I can move the camera a little bit. Let's get that close up to the feet. And let's get up to the head here. Keep them from walking off. So you can see the arms and the legs have kind of a syncopated movement. Okay. Move on to the build information. So here you can see this picture is all of the parts that it takes to uh, build the robot. And we'll just go through these and talk about them. I think there's some better build pictures now. These would be all the parts involved in making the feet. You have the feet base, the top of the feet. These are the ratchet wheels and these little rubber O rings go around the, uh, the wheels. This is the ratchet itself. And I'm just using finishing nails as the axle. So when a wheel drops in there, a finishing nail pokes through. When the ratchet's in there, a finishing nail goes through. And that one's in there, finishing nail goes through. And when the top of this foot is glued down, that keeps the nails from being able to escape. Here is, these are the legs. There's a left and right, and this is the leg linkage. And again, the linkage would pin down inside that foot part with a nail. Just as the... Uh, front of this leg pins to the foot as well. We'll cover that in more detail coming up. Here's a, an overview. This is the main chassis, the bottom of the body, but this is what your legs bolt to. This is what your motor bolts to. This is what that battery pack sat in that you saw when I removed the battery pack. This is the universal uh, Tamiya gearbox that we're going to be using sitting there. You can see here's part of an arm, some arm linkage, part of the arm crank. These are the cranks for the walking for the feet and the arm movement. Uses a push on off lamp type switch. Now we move down to the back. This is the back door. This is actually the inside of the back door. And these tanks which you end up painting the brackets and the ends. This is like those uh, key rings. It's normally a loop when you buy them and I think they're meant to go around your wrist to uh, hold keys, but you can just buy those and cut it in half and that'll give you two coil cords that you're going to end up uh, gluing into, into here in the back of the head. It's a decal that goes onto the, uh, the front chest. These long rods end up being the axles for the legs and when the body's put in place then the axles are held captive and you'll have to get some uh, metal rod from the hobby shop or well, something suitable. It's not It's not under any load. You just don't want it real sloppy. So here we can see the, the head print. 
the top of the head and uh, two clear ear pieces. In this case I used uh, those extra large um, push pins, the clear ones, and just cut the top of them off and kind of filed them till they were domed. Then you can flame polish them. You can just take a, a butane torch or something and run it really quickly over the plastic and it'll turn clear again, melts it clear. Uh, just a close-up again of the Tamiya Universal Motor, the cranks, arm crank, the arm. This is bolts to the inside of the arm inside the body, so basically this gives you your crank angle or leverage. The push switch. In this case, this goes back, this is like 2015. Um, I had these really large LEDs already, and so I just used a butt converter to change the 3 volts up to the high enough voltage and um, this particular type of lead, I could have selected any color I wanted in there. If I select all three RGB, then I get white. And I believe I went with the universal white. These days, it's much easier if you just buy... See, these look like a screw-in light. They're actually bright white LEDs, and the step-up inverter is built right into the screw base. You can find these on eBay, and you can find them on uh, AliExpress and places like that. But they're screw-in replacements for old-style flashlights. And uh, what's handy about them is, is the, the buck converter starts working below one volt. So even if you had a project that you wanted a bright white lead source in that ran on a single battery, you could still use these. And then, of course, they still work fine on three volts. And it's a lot simpler than paying 97 cents or a buck for that and then the white lead and everything adds up it's more parts and a current limiting resistor you can get rid of all that and just replace it with one part there's a close-up of the uh, Tamiya Universal gearbox just set up the way we're going to be using it the hexagonal shaft that comes with it has to be cut so that it'll fit uh, when, when the legs are put into the bottom of the body the shaft can't be any longer than that otherwise it would it would bump into the leg so that's going to set your length of that shaft and then you press these uh, two cranks onto it okay so this part back here facing that way that's the bottom this part here in this hole that actually would be the front the body would slide down on this way so we're kind of looking at it you know upside down and sideways but you can see how the motor bolts on the back side of that board when you saw me putting batteries into the toy earlier they were sitting on this side down here, the, the ground side slid in there. Kind of help you to think this whole thing just rotated like this. The uh, Tammy Universal motor comes with uh, mounting hardware. I use those screws to uh, bolt it in. You don't actually want to bolt it in yet. It kind of uh, need to put it in the legs and all that all kind of together at the same time. Here's the head and uh, the openings in the head. You want something that's translucent and the original Mexican robots, they had a variety of different gels and some of them looked like they used plastic tuck and roll type material in there. This particular one I found some blue swirl that was translucent. It was actually a plastic cover on top of a, a notebook, like if you buy uh, lined paper for school. Sometimes they have plastic uh, fronts and backs. Well, I found one that had this blue swirl kind of look to it that was semi-translucent and just cut a chunk out and uh, he fixed it onto the inside, glued it in there. There's the switch. It gets uh, secured with a nut on top and I also usually glue them. Here's the tanks painted. So you do the band part. I printed the whole thing in red, painted the band black, and then painted the ends silver. Again, trying to match the original toy. And there I'm just showing how, uh, you know, over three years ago I had used the uh, butt converter and the jumbo LED that I already had some of and just glued it on the back of the switch. So basically this is the top of the head. If you flip the whole thing over in your mind, that would be aiming towards the front window to illuminate that window we just talked about. Here's those uh, key rings. It's actually one. I just cut it into two pieces and uh, glue it down into the ends of the uh, tanks. This whole tank piece will glue onto the back door. There we go. So here's the back door. Glue it on. That all becomes one piece. So here's a picture of the uh, foot. 
foot cover still off, but you can see the nails that I talked about used as pins. Here's that ratchet with a nail for a pin. The front one, or actually this would be the rear, and this would be the front. Um, put on there. Here's that uh, linkage that runs up. And here's with the, the leg pinned on. When I run the nail through on the leg, then I usually just put a small drop of uh, goop glue or something out here to secure it so it can't come out. Uh, I mean, a person could put it on the back side of the head and push it in and then just trim that side off. Whatever's convenient. You do want it to be able to move freely. These are showing some of how the arms are going to move this cam or pivot or whatever you'd like to call it and this piece of linkage uh, a screw going in it's a, a number two fairly long and the same is true up here with one that runs in through here now because I was trying to make it look like the original toy normally I would run the screw from the arm out into something like this because it's easier to work with a screwdriver from the outside of the toy but the original toy didn't have a screw hole there in fact, it's, it's soldered on in the original one. So I ended up having to put them on the inside, which means when I assemble an arm on out here, I actually ran the screwdriver through the armhole on this side, tightened that one up. Then when it came time to do this one over here, I have to run it in at an angle and work it. It's a little bit more fussy. In fact, if I remember at right, the last few turns, I actually had a, a right angle screwdriver. You know, screwdrivers that come up and then bend. So I'd stick that in there and then actually turn the arm on the outside to tighten that last screw up. Again, if I was redesigning it just as something for people to build and not trying to imitate the look of an original toy, I'd have put the screw in from the outside and just screwed into these pieces. So you can see the one arm screwed on. The other arm's going to screw on there. So you can see how if you put a right angle screwdriver in there just to hold that screw head, you could put the arm on here and turn the arm and get it snug. The same cams on that universal gear motor, and there's the screws holding it on the back side of this. It's all on the inside. The same cams that move the legs are the same cams that move the arms. So that's why when you start assembling all of this lower stuff, you kind of have it all kind of flopping around out in the wind for a little bit. And in the end, there's these small blocks on either side that I glue to the inside of the leg, and that keeps this arm linkage from sliding off that cam post. In other words, kind of locks it in place. Doesn't pinch it, just keeps it from being able to fall off. Build picture, another build picture of the side of the head. Here we are pretty much assembled. I'm minus the decal on the front anyway. Now we have the decal on the front. It must have been the first two. There is supposed to be a little an a flex antenna piece coming out of the top of the head if you're trying to imitate the original toy. And I had found, um, I think it was Solar Botics up in Canada. They had a small flex drive shaft that they were using as feelers, as sensors. And I believe that's where I ended up getting this small flex material. You can check their website and see what you can find. It's not critical. You only do it if you're really trying to imitate the original toy. Because, I mean, you could put any kind of ears you want on there. You can go with any color scheme. In fact, the robots were done in a lot of different color schemes. So, again, you can see how the back lifts off and these flex things. Let's go back one picture. Well, it doesn't show the height where, but they just glue into two holes in the back of the head. It shows how the battery pack sits in that cradle. can be lifted out. What I was trying to show here is how these uh, tongues go up underneath and come down. Back then, these robots were all printed with a, a flash forward dreamer at uh, 0 0.2, so it wasn't a high quality print or anything special. There it is lit up. There's one done in a, a different color scheme, which was one of the color schemes that actually was used in the original toys. There was some box art that I had uh, made up for the ones that I had built. The all red was an original color scheme also. Uh, 
There's kind of a lineup. That must have been the first build. Did an all silver and all gold, all white. Here it is from the backs. A little in the round. Some of the artwork. So, I guess that gives you a pretty good idea. I'm going to put the files up on Thingiverse. I know it's not quite as good as having an actual build video where you actually see me go through every step, but hey, certainly better than nothing, right? There we go. There's all the parts. Really not that many 3D printed parts to, uh, to have to make. And the universal motor, let's see, I think I believe I have the link up here. Or not a link, but this one's just on eBay. You can find it. It's Tamiya Universal Gearbox. They're about $8, $8.50. Certainly, they're less than 10 bucks almost anywhere you, you buy them. You can find them for less than 8 and you can find them for more. You end up uh, snipping this little shaft off the front. We won't be using that shaft. And in this case, they have this gearbox set vertically, but you see by taking these screws out, you can rotate this whole front end. In our case, it would be rotated this way, and you would catch these screw holes. And it comes with the mounting gears, everything you need to do the job. Maybe we can go back to the other picture. Uh, uh. Anyway, you get the idea. But have fun with it.